In this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up the basics of the battle system for our 2D top-down game. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to be switching between the main camera and another camera. So what I did was I went and I created a scene right below this and I labeled the other camera battle camera and we can check that and it just shows the battle area but I disabled that because I don't want two cameras in the scene at once it'll give uh, issues with the audio listener and such and so we're going to be enabling and disabling the cameras and switching back and forth so this is going to be using the same script that we use for changing cameras from um, an earlier tutorial and then to set up our battle system I did different enemy spawns so once we start creating enemies and we have them as prefabs we'll choose random enemies to spawn in these three locations that the player can attack and if you're wondering how I set up these little icon things you can go and click on here and select whatever icon you want it makes it easier for finding game objects since you can't see them unless you click on them in here this way you can click on them just like that so I'm guessing that'll help a lot of people out with that and so yeah so I set up just my battle area there's nothing special about this area but yeah and for the battle camera I threw a battle system onto there since we're not going to really be needing to check stats um, during gameplay at all um, I'm just going to be checking for stats during the battles since that's the only time the stats really pop up or the only time you really uh, use them I might transfer this over to a different section maybe the um, maybe the main game object up there just so it's always active in the scene maybe at a battle I want to use a potion or something so we might transfer that over in the future but for now I'm showing you guys how to set this up so that's all you need for the battle area currently so we can go over a couple of the scripts that I or what I did to the scripts to make this possible so in our update we're going we're actually going to be using a new way to call to change variables from different scripts I know I told you guys before that static was the way to do it but when you're dealing with multiple game objects like instantiate and such you do not want to use that it'll cause a lot of issues for your game um, if you're dealing damage to one enemy um, it'll deal damage to all of them with that who, that have that variable set to static so we're going to be using um, different ways of coding that so sorry that I taught you guys the wrong way I mean it works if you're just using like one player and one enemy and not instantiating a bunch it'll it'll work that way but this is a much better way of doing that so we can go into our main game first this is just a, an empty game object and this is where I threw the change camera code in here. Now I do have a disable movement script that I might throw in later or actually no let's take that out because I forgot that I already included a way in the movement to make it so it doesn't move while we're in battle so we don't even need that but yeah and here is just the switching of cameras depending on if we're in battle or not so we're using in battle so if it's true uh, we want to switch to the battle camera if not we want to switch back to the in-game moving around camera and we're not going to worry about enemies right now as doing some coding for it but this is where we're going to be spot or creating the code for our enemies and doing the spawning of that and giving them random uh, values for their health and all that depending on what kind of creature they are giving them different abilities but we won't worry about that right now so in our movement we're using this line of code to call objects from a different script now you want to put this variable wherever in the script so if it, it's an update function and you want to um, check for a certain script in another script you want to include that so that would be you can put that in a different like down here how I put this in starting counter as well to call that so pretty much what this does we're just that's just a generic name for it other scripts 
main game one. That is the script that you're going to want to be calling the variable from. So you plug that in there. You also want to plug it in here for that script name. And main game is the object that the script is on. So since this is the object um, that the current script for uh, the main game one is on, we want to find that object as well. And so we're doing other script. So we plug this down here, other script dot in battle. If that equals false, then we can move around. If it's in battle, and it, th then it would be changed to true, then we can't uh, move our player around. This is so if we're pressing keys while we're in a battle, it won't move our player out of that position until we switch back into uh, gameplay. So, yeah. And then in our previous tutorial, we created a walk counter which we called starting counter once we hit. Now I changed the range a little bit lower so it's easier to get into a battle. That's just for testing purposes right now. And so I also did that same variable other script because we're still wanting to access variables in here. And other script dot in battle. So in the script if you had multiple variables you could just do other script that variable equals to whatever. If it's an int you could do like five. If it's a boolean true or false like whatever you want to do to get that active. So those are the two lines of code that I changed in the movement. And then I created a simple battle system. It's not completely functional yet, but it will be possibly in our next tutorial when I'm explaining more of that. So yeah, uh, we use that, that same script again to access main game one and we're checking for in battle again so if that equals true then we're going into our phases for um, the battle system first it's going to be the players turn and they're going to go through a list of different phases until they attack or do whatever and then it'll switch over to the enemies phases um, not sure how I'm going to set all that up yet but I have the basics for the player attack so I created a variable for turn equals one phase equals zero. So turn, um, this is checking whether one for the player's turn, two for the enemy's turn, and so on. Phase is um, what part of the attack they are, so zero could be selection phase, we're going to be selecting attack, item, or run. Um, phase like one might be a uh, like once you select one of those options you'll be able to select a different option so if I selected attack we can go and select a different attack if we selected item we can select a different item and these are just GUI buttons that we can click and I added in some other phases but we're going to be going over this more in future tutorials so there's nothing really set in stone right now it's kind of just showing you guys what I'm doing currently for it and it will give you a basic idea of how to set up a battle system for yourself if you wanted to create a different style of battle system. So in my next tutorial when we actually get the battle function uh, working correctly I'm gonna include the scripts then but for now this is just teaching you guys how or a simple way to set up the battle system. So I guess if people suggest or ask for a certain piece of code um, I guess I'll post it, but other than that, I'll be posting it in the um, next tutorial because there's not too much new code added. But, oh, damn, I close it. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, that those are the basic systems I set up. Sorry if it's a little bit confusing right now. I'll try explaining it better in future tutorials, but we will go in here and I'll show you guys what it does. Three, three, one... Hopefully I can get it to go into a battle. That would just be bad luck if it didn't. And I guess I'm having... okay. <laughs> so battle has started. Players phase. So I'll probably move these down here somewhere. Something. I don't have... Um, or I should have enemy spawn. I had a box in there. I'm get. oh it's right here. A little bit off screen. I'll have to adjust um, where they spawn at. But yeah, we have our different buttons in here. 
and when we click these it'll move to the next phase depending on whatever and also make a button for going back to different phases so maybe you decide to attack oh wait I don't want to attack click back maybe I want to use an item instead or run away different stuff like that so that's our basic battle system for now once the battle finishes it will disable the battle fit or it'll award XP and items and then it'll jump back into gameplay so battle phase ended and we'll have to figure out a way to reset um, the battle each time so with new enemies spawn new prefabs delete the old ones and so on and so forth so stay tuned for future tutorials hopefully we can uh, get this battle system working nicely and get all that stuff set up